Yeah, thanks, Dan. So I'm Sivan, uh, and this is uh, what I'm going to do is basically I'm going to put forward the proposal. So this talk is not going to be technical. I'm not going to tell you anything you don't know. Uh, we're going to propose an activity, propose something, basically some kind of an implementation challenge, and uh, we basically self-assembled into some sort of an organizing committee for this. And when I say we, I mean Eric Bowman, who is not here. Uh, Bruce Hendrickson and John Gilbert, who are both here, uh, and myself. And uh, we came up with this idea basically because we uh, realized, like all of you have realized by now, that we can solve Laplacian linear systems or diagonally dominant linear systems really fast, and that fast Laplacian solvers, uh, we now understand, imply fast solvers for other important problems, max flow, some finite element problems, image processing problems that uh, Gary's group has been working on, and the other pro the problems that Alexander was talking about yesterday. So there, these are two very important, we feel like, I think many other people in this room feel that these are two separate, very important uh, contributions, sets of ideas, these fast Laplacian solvers and the appreciation that these fast Laplacian solvers can, can be used as building blocks for other higher level algorithms, uh, higher level applications. Um, <clears throat> and we basically felt that we want to reap uh, the benefits of these two sets of ideas. Uh, we want fast applications like max flow solvers and so on, higher level algorithms and end user applications that are based on fast Laplacian solvers. Uh, this might be some sort of a, maybe, so we put here Laplacian revolution, maybe the, the term that uh, uh, Gary and Richard and, and Yanis used is a paradigm, the Laplacian paradigm, uh, the idea that you can use fast Laplacian solvers to solve a range of interesting, uh, useful problems. And in our minds, the 50-year-old the 50 year old, the 50 year analogy 50-year-old analogy is the FFT. It was a, an algorithmic idea uh, that really served as a building block for lots of other algorithms and really changed the way people designed algorithms. In this case, mostly for signal processing. People started looking for algorithms and for, for uh, co constructions, abstractions that can be resolved using the FFT. So before the FFT, you could do linear things, nonlinear things. They could be uh, time dependent, not time independent. But the FFT really framed signal processing in terms of what you can do with the FFT. So it, computer science is bigger than that. It's not. I mean, we are not claiming, or we don't think that you can solve every problem in, in computer science, or even even every graph problem with Laplacian solvers. But th this could be a, a useful building block, like the FFT was 50 years ago. It's it's. It's a limited analogy. The FFT is much simpler. It was 50 years ago, but still, that's the, that's the way we would like to think about this. Um, there is a problem with getting, of, you know, materializing this revolution, and the, the problem is that uh, these fast Laplace, Laplacian solvers are fast mostly in theory. So there is now a large set of ideas that can be used to construct fast Laplacian solvers. Some of these ideas have been converted into code. I think basically the only one is the code by, by the group by G Gary, uh, Richard, and, uh, and Yanis. Uh, but there are, there are lots of other ideas by, by, uh, by Dan Chenghua, by, by John, Sid, uh, Aaron, uh, Lorenzo. There, there are lots of other ideas that are still mostly paper algorithms. There are algorithms that, that show up in papers. So. Uh, and so this is so that's why we can't really reap those benefits right now because it's not clear that you can now that you can implement now a fast uh, max flow algorithm even if you use the Laplacian solver as a building block as a, as a black box because there aren't that many really fast uh, Laplacian solvers or Laplacian solvers that have been demonstrated uh, realistically to be really fast uh, and. What we are aiming with this effort is to achieve impact. To, 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 and to achieve impact, you need innovative algorithms. We clearly have lots of innovative uh, ideas in this, in this area. You need theory to explain them. I mean, in Simons, I don't have to, to talk about theory. Clearly, we have 
very complete detailed theories to explain how these ideas work together and we need fast implementations and that part is lacking not completely missing but really lacking and the, the key idea is that we want to try to to do a community effort to transform ideas into technology I mean what what really uh, people are after is technology things that actually do something compute something and what we have now falls somewhat short of that. We have ideas, we don't have technology. <clears throat> so what we, what we thought is that, so we were basically, uh, Eric and I were in Dagstuhl two, two, three weeks ago and we were thinking about what it would take to actually do this transformation from ideas to technology and the idea we came up with is an idea to do some sort of a competitive effort or a, a uh, uh, we, we're not focused on the competition, we're focused on the, on the impact, on making the impact, but we thought that a competition or a challenge structure uh, would work well, and the idea is that we want to set up some sort of a competition where the competition motivates people to implement, develop, and study fast solvers, fast software, solvers in, in software, software for implementing fast solvers, and that the software will generate impact that right now is latent, not is, is potentially possible but not occurring right now uh, and the idea is to try to motivate to inspire people to participate and to also I think in the, an important part of it is to give incentives for, for people to do this work I think part of the thing that was missing was incentive I think we can discuss this later I think this is an important part I mean when when the, the three of us discussed this uh, yesterday we felt that the most uh, the weakest link in this proposal, in this idea, is to find a way to, motiva to motivate everybody to, to pull together and to, and to do this. Uh, and and it's, it's easy for lots of us to say why this is a really cool idea, really a good idea, but I don't, for each one of us, this doesn't make sense. Okay, it's, it's a good idea, but it doesn't make sense for me. So we're, the, 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 the discussion of whether the, there is enough incentive or not enough incentive is really should be, a, we think, should be a, a key point in this discussion. Uh, so that people participate and implement, and th this is just a buzzword, but uh, we, actually we started with the better buzzword, like the Laplacian Olympics, but we, we, Eric and I thought that we would get sued for trademark violation, so we switched to something that does, that's not trademarked. Uh, but uh, again, just a word, I mean, maybe we should change this to an implementation challenge. I mean, this is more unique. The implementation challenges, there, there have been several, so we, we try to be unique. Uh, okay, so let me talk a little bit about the, the structure. Uh, it's a proposal. We are doing this in order to get feedback from potential participants to try to see how to structure this and, like I said, how to give incentives that, that work for people uh, in terms of uh, participation. Uh, so the basic structure is, I think, kind of different than the DIMAX challenges, if people are uh, familiar with them. Uh, and this, the, the overall structure is that uh, there would be teams you guys, and there is an organizing committee, we, some people might, might be on both sides, but uh, the, there are teams that implement solvers and the organizing committee measures the performance. So you can also, obviously, you need to measure in order to optimize to know where you, where you stand, but the idea is that there is some sort of official measurements, official timings uh, that the organizing committee does, and we want to do this uh, for fairness, for completeness, and for ease of comparison. So we want eventually to come up with, with data that says that this solver is fast on these problems and that solver is fast on those problems so that we can see, people can see where things need to be improved, where there are opportunities, where there are uh, black holes and so on. Uh, obviously you can also measure, uh, and I'll talk about publication, you can measure your data is your data, you can publish your data. Uh, uh, and there are specific cases where it's easy to uh, to see where teams would need to measure basically the amount of measurements that we can do without exploding the, the without explosion of different measurements is limited so if you have a solver that's particularly good at 
specific task. For example, low accuracy. It, it's very fast when you require low accuracy. We might not test this. You can test this and show that, that, uh, that, that, it's, that uh, you do well in particular cases. But basically, you implement, we measure. And we try to measure this on one platform, so everybody is on a level playing field. Just to back up what he said, he asked, um, will you have public material? So just to tell you the typical way, say in structural, uh, determining the structure of a protein or whatever, typically what you do is, is the our governing organization head puts, uploads a very large database of example problems. And then the actual competitions are essentially in real time, where you put up more, you know, uh, one or a few further problems, further challenges, so you can't really tune your system for yes. the trial guides. And then you compete under those conditions. Yes, we plan to do something very close to what you, well, you, what you described. Will the data you give are be representative? Crucial. Like, will the samples you give be representative of your things? Or are you going to sort of purposefully leave off the let me, uh, I'll keep going and I'll, I'll address the presentation. We'll address both of those issues. Um, uh, to make this, one, uh, one way to give people incentive is to have, in a sporting event, is to have lots of events so that many people can come out with medals. So we are going to have many different events. So you can, and, and the key is both to cover different applications, different application, different application scenarios, and so on, but also to give people opportunity to write codes that are good at something, but not necessarily at everything, OK? Uh, so there, uh, whoops, sorry. Uh, so in terms of the, the, the problems, we're going to have uh, sort of traditional structurally, structural analysis type uh, problems, 2D, 3D meshes, uh, networks, maybe scale-free graphs. Uh, if we get contributions of matrices or generators for image, the Laplacians that come from Im image processing would be happy to include those. Uh, Ill-conditioned expander, uh, expander graphs, Laplacians of ill-conditioned Ill uh, Laplacians of expanders. Uh, we're going to test both Laplacians and diagonally dominant matrices unless so we get to some conclusion. Just, uh, I'll, uh, I'll explain. Uh, um, uh, uh, and very importantly, uh, we'll include all reasonable community contributions. So if you think that you have a solver that's particularly good at something, you can contribute a matrix generator or a set of matrices from that application so that you can do well on this and everybody else will not do well. But these, are, these are, will be put out is part of the benchmark set for everybody to tune their codes on or to tune their algorithms on. So all the, all the testing is going to be using publicly available matrix generators mostly and sometimes instances. Uh, in condition, so, some of, so you can see that some of, them, some of these are motivated by actual applications or at least things that are conceivable applications for fast Laplacians. These, for example, uh, are examples are, are, these are matrices that we want to include in order to try to help differentiate different solvers. So what, what we mean by ill-conditioned expanders is we'll generate gra expanders, random expanders, and then we'll weight the edges to make the Laplacian highly ill-conditioned. Okay, and that's, that, uh, we feel that we feel that that family of matrices will make a, a large uh, number of existing solvers look really bad and will uh, let the universal uh, linear, almost linear time bound algorithms sort of show their strength. Okay, so, so what, I, what I mean, uh, I, I'll, I'll say a little more about different solvers later. But you can imagine that on you know, 2D meshes or even 3D meshes, people have optimized solvers that, are, that may not have the kind of universal theoretical bounds, but they've optimized them for 60 years, and they're solvers that run really, really fast. Uh, so we want, so, and other, like I said, the community, you guys, everybody is welcome to include families of matrices, to contribute families of matrices that will help distinguish, or help uh, 
you know, make your solver shine, basically. Um, uh, we will test serial codes, we'll test parallel codes, both shared memory parallel codes, and if there are contributions that are distributed memory parallel codes, we'll test these. Uh, you'll see in a minute that there are existing distributed memory and shared memory parallel codes that we can test. They're not, they not specialized to Laplacians, they apply to all symmetric positive definite matrices, but we plan to include them. Uh, and in terms of the What's important, there were people who were asking me yesterday uh, about you know, the metric. The metric is going to be stopwatch time, time, real time. Uh, we're going to measure time. Uh, and for every event, there are going to be two winners, one for the fastest absolute <laughs> time. So you want to use a large parallel machine, or you want to use a large fraction, or all of our parallel machine, you can do that. Uh, but also in terms of efficiency. So another kind of metric for success is the number of cores times time, uh, total computer time that you've wasted solving that particular linear system. And it's likely that to win here, you'll need a serial code. I mean, it's easier, easiest to do this, to, to make it most efficient using a sequential code. What about many problems that are solved approximately? Should you look at the, at the error? Um, we, that's a, it's up for discussion. Our current thoughts uh, in order to, in they are that in order to have a playing level field, we're going to require high accuracy of all the solvers. So if somebody has a low accuracy, sol low accuracy solver to compete, they will have to boost the accuracy using an, an iterative scheme. So you uh, fix the epsilon. Yes, we'll require uh, residuals that are close to machine epsilon. Realistically achievable, but close to machine epsilon. Uh, it's can we do square root machine epsilon? We can do square root machine epsilon, <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, um, okay. Uh, our intent is that to, we will try to, to, to have most of the events be played on mat matrix generators that generate random insta instances of families of matrices, like 2D meshes, we will, you know, uh, draw points in the plane, we'll run a you know, triangulation algorithm, Voronoi or a triangle or something, uh, and choose weights. But the idea is that the instances will be random, drawn from a matrix generator that you will have access to. Everybody will be in the competition, everybody solves this exactly the same problem, but the, problem, so the problems are identical, but they're random. Uh, the problem sizes will also be random, so it will be sort of exponentially growing to see how solvers do uh, asymptotically, but the exact sizes will also be random. Uh, it's possible that there are some applications for which we'll have good specific instances, but not really reliable generators for instances like this. If you think about web graphs or social network graphs, it's... Uh, People claim that they have generators for this, but it's, there is the debate whether the generators really generate matrices that, that, uh, that are like web graphs and so, and so on. Um, uh, these are, I mean, we are, like I said, this is a proposal, so the accuracy is one issue, or the, the size of the residual to stop it is, or to, to require is one issue. The other issue is whether to do you know, one solve, multiple right-hand sides, or uh, whether you, you, you really rep generate, whether the, the solver generates a, a representation of the inverse that can be applied relatively quickly to additional right-hand sides, or whether it's a one-shot algorithm and you have to pay the entire price again if you solve another linear system. Um, these are questions we haven't resolved yet, and it'll be interesting to hear what people think is useful. Uh, okay, so that's in terms of the overall structure. Now we'll talk a little bit about the teams, and afterwards we'll talk about the, the timeline, the structure of, the, of participation, how to participate. But before we, we talk about how to participate, I'll talk a little bit about the teams. Uh, so uh, some, teams might, some te teams might be organic teams, or maybe I should start by saying that we, in the initial discussions, we felt that the right way to participate in this, or the most productive, effective way to participate in this is through teams, not through individual effort. I mean, we, we, you're welcome to participate individually, but it's going to be easier to participate as, as part of a team. Some, some teams are organic. People already know, you know, 
uh, uh, Gary and Yanis and, and Richard and maybe other students. I mean, that's, that's an organic team. People know, already know each other. They already work together. That's great. I mean, if you can do that, that's great. If you can't do that, uh, like I said, it's going to be helpful uh, to team up. Uh, and we feel that in order to do well, you probably need teams that have both the theoreticians and strong high-performance computing experts. Uh, we don't feel that this challenge is, uh, is doable or doable in a useful way by giving a, a, a stack of papers to an undergrad and say, okay, why don't you implement this? It's the, the algorithmic engineering choices. I mean, if you look at, the, at some of those papers, they have parameters. How do you tune the parameters? What's the impact of the parameters? If the parameters, even, you know, three different parameters, you're in three dimensional space. How do you find the point that generates a good algorithm? And if you just give them this to people with even, you know, full professors who are doing high performance computing their entire careers, they might, they, they will not be able to tune those algorithmic parameters. They might be able to do other things well and so on. So I think it should be View, the challenge should be really viewed as a research challenge, both in terms of not inventing new algorithms for Laplacians, but in terms of algorithmic engineering for Laplacian solvers, and in terms of high-performance computing, getting those codes to run fast. Yes. So when you said that you know, you're going to allow people to run parallel ones, have you considered having a separate competition for something like a GPU? <laughs> I think I thought about this, and right now my take on this is the GPUs uh, is the kind of thing that you measure on your own. So it's okay to say uh, uh, you enter a code. If your code can use GPUs in the official runs, it will not use GPUs. You can do your own runs. We can help you do, do runs or maybe on the same machine with GPUs, but it's going to be sort of a, a, a sideshow. Okay, circus show separate from the main sporting event. Yes? Is this just because the hybrid differences are too much between different GPUs? Or? No, most could be mostly because, like I said, we want to keep this manageable so people can, can so we can compare. I mean, what, you, what you're suggesting is, that, um, is great. I mean, if people can exploit GPUs, that's fantastic. But the likelihood that multiple teams will be able to use GP, to exploit GPUs is not so high. And then we are not after measuring one code. We are after a, a deeper understanding that comes from looking at multiple implementations or at least multi implementations of multiple algorithms. Okay? Uh, there, there are many things like that that, that you can come up with. GPUs, uh, like, uh, low precision, there are many kind of things that, you can ex that your solver can excel in, but it's hard to uh, compare across the board. Sivan? Yes? I just want to elaborate on a point you made earlier that make sure was very clearly. The value in this, certainly from my view, is not you know, the competition, the line on your resume, the community forward in constructive ways. Mm -hmm. that, that, that I hopefully we'll get some nice software out of this that will be useful to to you know to propagating theoretical ideas into more applied communities. Maybe there'll be some new collaborations that'll be that'll arise again across great communities. Probably most importantly though I think we collectively will gain greater understanding about which algorithmic ideas are effective in practice and which aren't. And that's the real value here. This is just a context to kind of make it more fun to, to move us forward in those dimensions. Yes, completely. OK. Um, I, I mean, this audience is mostly theoreticians. Uh, you, you may know HPC experts that you can recruit for your team. Uh, if you don't, we can help uh, doing some matchmaking. Uh, I think the four of us know people on both sides, both theoreticians and HPC experts. Uh, if you want to compete, but you, you feel you need more talent, more expertise, we can try to sort of suggest people. Uh, okay. Uh, there's also going to be uh, archaeological relics competing this against you. Uh, and the idea here is that there, are, there is a lot of software that can already solve Laplacian linear systems. All of that software, as far as we know, can also solve uh, symmetric, uh, symmetric positive definite, sparse symmetric positive definite matrices that are not Laplacians. But they can still do pretty well, at least on up to some asymptotic size of n. Uh, uh, these, include, let me, uh, these include sparse direct solvers. There are lots of them out there. 
uh, algebraic multigrid solvers that are sort of they're not specialized to Laplacians, but they're specialized to problems that are sort of look like Laplacians. Uh, all kinds of uh, conventional preconditioning ideas for conjugate gradients, like uh, incomplete Koleski, uh, sparse approxim approximate inverses. Uh, it's possible that some of the authors of those uh, software packages will enter the competition. It's also possible that they will not enter the competition, and if that happens, we will just run their software. We'll download the, the, uh, those packages and we will run them. Uh, and they, I, the intent here is to provide a quantitative context for the performance of graph-based linear solvers. Uh, and the, when I say the, the intent, the, the bar that we want everybody to, to cross is the bar of being able to publish uh, your so the, the results of your solver in the you know, high performance computing numerical linear algebra literature. And without those comparisons, our experience says you cannot publish anything in that literature. So our intent is to, uh, again, in terms of advancing things forward, is to show everybody outside this room that these solvers are not only fast asymptotically, they're actually faster than established baselines. So, and people need baselines in order to make comparisons and we'll include the baselines whether their developers or their, uh, whether the developers enter the competition or not. Uh, there might be others that we don't, if people want to suggest other solvers that can, that can be applied, we'll be happy to, to include them, but we'll, th th these are the main ones, these are the main ones we had in mind. Okay, in terms of the timeline and the structure, the idea is that we start this after we lay out the rules. This is just a proposal. Is the team, uh, people team up, uh, form some sort of team structures, and start implementing or designing the implementations while we, the organizing committee, prepare and release the matrix generators. Hopefully, at least initial releases should happen fairly quickly so that people can code and test the codes on the matrix generators. Uh, you test and optimize, and then maybe four months into this, uh, we do a qualifying run. Or six months uh, into this, we do a qualifying run. In the qualifying run, we, you submit codes, we test the codes, we, we time the codes, we collect the results, we anonymize the results, and you send, we send them back to you. We tell each team which anonymous team is their team so that they can see how their code performed relative to other codes, but uh, you know, you're not, if your code is slow, you, you don't get embarrassed, nobody knows it's you. I mean, this anonymity in a small group is sort of shaky, but at least the intent is, these are not public results, we're not going to publish those results. These are uh, experimental setups. Also, these qualifying runs will help us get the bugs out of the uh, the system that runs the software, that runs the different solvers and so on, negotiate how it should be run and so on, then you get time to optimize again, and then we do the competition. And then there are two uh, uh, further, two, two very important phases. The first one is everybody meets uh, mostly to learn from each other, but also to have a, some sort of a award ceremony, but really uh, to, we, we intend to do a workshop in which uh, uh, people will present what they've done so that we can learn from each other and exactly learn which kind of ideas are useful, which kind of ideas have been tested by the teams and discarded because they couldn't make them work and, and so on. So this is a very important uh, idea that we took from the DIMAX implementation challenges and we published the results. So uh, which again follow, follows this is a, a, a way of again making those uh, lessons formal and publicizing them beyond the, the group that uh, participated in the, in the effort. Uh, how we do this, where we do this, I mean, I looked for the most appropriate place in the world that's Rue Laplace in the Latin Quarter in Paris. Uh, but it, I, I think it lacks the, the facilities to do this, but I mean, if, if it didn't lack, that would be a nice place to do this uh, Laplacean competition. Uh, so, I mean, most of it is going to be online, uh, but like I said, we're going to have a workshop and publish a volume of papers uh, on the competition and on the solvers, and we need to find venues for both of them, for the workshop and for publishing this volume. Uh, 
in terms of the publication, uh, I, I think again, learning, uh, you know, copying the, the structure of the DIMAX implementation challenge, there is a paper that describes, a write up that describes the structure of the competition, the, the test matrices, and also all the results. I mean, who, who ranked where or graphs, tables of results, so that people can study them and, and figure out uh, what's going on, which solver did well and what problems. And every team publishes a paper that describes the implementation and explaining the results. So your paper, for example, can refer to the graphs or the tables in the, in, the, in, the, in the main paper, or you can copy them and so on. So the idea is you say, there is an anomaly in my running time. It ran really slow on some problem sizes, and you try to explain why that happens. That's typical of experimental papers, uh, what needs to be done in experimental papers. Um, the intent is to, um, is to try to collect those papers in one volume so that people can refer to them, people can study them, and have one place to go when they want to know what makes a Laplacian solver go fast. Uh, that means that, the, that uh, we have to be careful about the quality we demand. So one possibility is to do a special issue in a journal or something like this, but that puts the bar really high. And if you have papers, you know, solvers that are really good and ideas that are really interesting, but a paper that's really shaky, it won't get into ACM tomes, for example. I think we should still include it, include it rather than exclude it, exclude it. Uh, so that puts some constraints on, on where we publish, uh, but that's up for discussion. Uh, in terms of the venues, like uh, Dimax is an obvious uh, venue. Uh, they ran implementation challenges. We can try to talk to them to see whether they wanted to make this the next implementation challenge. Uh, they, uh, they hold workshops, uh, and they have a, a, a series of volumes on different, different proceedings of, conf of workshops, I think. These include the, uh, <coughs> challenge, the challenges. Uh, we are here at Simmons. It would be great to do this as a follow-up at Simmons. I, I think in terms of the, at least the physical venue, I think, I, 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 I think many people would prefer not to go to Dimax in New Jersey. Let me, okay. <laughs> so, but, uh, but these are two, two options. Doug Schul is also an option. I think they would be receptive to this idea. And like I said, in terms of the publication, Dimax has, has a proceedings, uh, volumes of proceedings, of workshops, especially issue in the journal is more complicated, but it's doable, I think, uh, and your input is really crucial on this, uh, this thing. Uh, and like I said, the main, the main idea, the main, the most important thing is for you to participate. If you come out of this uh, one hour session and feel that this is a great idea, and your, your bystanders, your, your, the audience, that's not going to fly. We really need you to participate. Uh, that's it. OK, maybe I'll switch to John to lead it. Okay. Oh, the one quick comment. So, so the Plasian paradigm really has two components, right? Here's a numeric and there's a graph theory. So I could imagine that you know, people with skills in one or the other, and you can imagine that it's enough work just to have a good graph theoretic component, a good spanning tree algorithm or something, and that that would be an important part of the competition, as well as the numerics, because to the most part, these are two separate things that have to go together. Not necessarily, right? Depends on the algorithm. Right. But I mean, <laughs> to be completely legitimate, to say for each of these generators, have people run, you know, test out people's low stretch spanning tree implementations. Yes. Of course, now you suddenly have two parameters, the running time of it and the quality of the tree. Yeah. And, uh, and then we also know from, you know, the, tr the stretch of the tree is not, doesn't exactly dictate the running time of the algorithm, but it could be completely that someone has code that can just take this low stretch spanning tree as a black box and you combine it with someone else's low stretch spanning tree black box and you get something much better. Yeah, or at least have a place where <coughs> these two pieces of code are, right. you know, you want to uh, mix them. Yes. Uh, okay, there are two, two separate issues here. One is, I, thi I, I think we, uh, the organizing committee feels that we are at the point, you know, 10 years after your, your paper and two years after uh, the Cosmos paper, uh, where, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So 
we want to see the whole package running together. So that's, that's one thing. So you're right about the different pieces that need to go into the solver, but I think we are at the point where we want to see complete solvers rather than to do a challenge on components like the low, like the low stress spanning tree. The time for that has passed. We are past that. Uh, in terms of how people, I, I, I completely agree. It takes expertise in numerics, in high performance computing, and in graph algorithms, and people we need, that's why I said teams. People we need, we need to put the pieces together. I don't think we are going to have any constraints on where people get the pieces from as long as they're you know, open about this. So if you want to contribute, if Yanis wants to contribute uh, a low, spe low stress stretch spanning tree implementation, put it on Google code, and other people want to use it, that's fine. If you don't want to put your, your, yours because you have a competitive spirit and you want to win, that's also fine. Uh, I mean, my idea was that there are people that only do the graph algorithm side, and it'd be nice to suck them in. And one way is to sort of include experiments that included just the graph theory. And there are other people that do just the numeric side, right, that, for their expertise. You can imagine that it'd be nice to suck them in and whether they have to marry to some other group or not. Yeah, yeah I, I completely agree. It, it would be great to suck those people in. At least my take, but this is open for discussion. My take is that you suck them in into teams that put the whole package together, but rather than have a separate event for them to compete in or something like this. That, but that's, that's my opinion. Other people are entitled to other opinions. You want to pass yeah, it, John? Maybe we'll switch with John.